After Rampage, man, holy the shit. first dance, the CM Oops. Punk return, man, after a seven year hiatus. We were there in his last match. We were there. We should so, have made an effort. We should have made an effort to, to make I it know. to those. Uh, it's those damn kids, you know? And fucking two year old with her birthday coming up. Just ruining everything. All right. <laughs> well, hi, everybody, and welcome. To a pipe bombing, ice cream treating, CM motherfucking punking returning episode of the Brothers of Discussion. Man, we're gonna talk the end, the hiatus. It's over. He's back, man. Punk's future with the company, uh, a once in a lifetime pop. Um, definitely up there with the loudest wrestling crowd reactions ever, nay, live event reactions ever. Um, and then, I don't know, maybe we'll make some time for a SummerSlam preview. Who knows? But, man, first, oh, my God. We talked uh, a, a couple weeks in a row. You know, AEW has a lot of pressure on their shoulders. Uh, North Moto, what's up? North Moto dropping out. I thought I was the only one who kept hours like this. No, not on CM Punk <laughs> night, brother. Not on CM Punk <laughs> night. And our boy Tristan's here, too. Yeah, happy CM <laughs> Punk night. Good to see you. You, you better, yeah, you better get out of here, Tristan, because I'm about to, uh, I'm about to talk, uh, I talk pretty well about uh, Chicago in the in the area. The pop <laughs> yeah, they gave. We're gonna talk very glowingly about do. that. Yeah, that yeah, city. Something you know, I have uh, to do. They hit a ninth inning grand slam. It was a perfect crowd reaction. But man, we talked uh, for weeks. If Punk is actually coming back, a lot of pressure on AEW shoulders, right? To just get this get this moment right and man did they deliver um yeah. they, they didn't overthink it at all you know they put that that moment and the responsibility of two parties the city of chicago and cm punk's mike skills and both parties stepped it up huge uh, that crowd could not have you couldn't ask for a better pop that was that was up there with the stone cold you know crash in the mankind championship that was the 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 volume of a like a hulk hogan heel turn that was just one of the great loud pops ever um and and punk we wondered right we wondered what that promo was going to be that first one you know he had to make some mention in wwe uh yep. you know he made some commentary there about um being in that company, uh, he was never going to get physically, emotionally, or spiritually healthy. Um, whew, still, uh, I don't think he's ever going back to WWE. Um, but uh, man, he uh, he he hit every note I think that you could have wanted out of a debut. And uh, you know, like he said, he he said a lot of that was unplanned. He wanted to see how he felt in the moment. And uh, I think Chicago definitely put his mind in a great spot. I think that AEW is going to be perfect for for Punk in his wrestling career. Man, what a what a debut! Um, Matt, your your initial thoughts on this? Well, it's just it's so funny. Uh, and Amy, I'm glad you're here. Uh, she's still in shock. Um, yeah. I think I want to jump on that first because I. So I'm in, I'm here. I was right where I'm standing right now watching it. Uh, Cause we're still getting prepped for a uh, uh, birthday party this weekend. And so I, you know, I'm, I'm making space. I'm letting Michelle watch what she wants to watch. Cause she's doing, she's like getting crafts ready and stuff. So she needs to be able to watch what she wants to watch. So I'm in my office watching this and that pop, I mean, I'm standing, I'm standing here and I'm, I'm, we're, I'm in Michigan right now. I'm so, you know, I'm, I'm not near this, but you know, I made the, I, I put the tweet out there. Like you could feel it. And I said, I could feel that in Michigan. Um, but really it was just like, there's so much raw power and emotion in that. Um, you know, we're, we're hockey fans too. Um, and there's something about like those, those overtime goals, even for teams that are not in Detroit, Red Wings, and I, I just get so pumped for it. And I go back and watch highlights of overtime goals because you love to see the roar of the crowd. But, Mike, I would challenge any hockey crowd, any football crowd, any basketball crowd 
to not even like they don't even know the overtime goal is coming, right? So they get the surprise of like, oh, we might lose, but oh, and and instead it's it's weeks uh, of AEW. Uh, I don't know if you even want to say lightly teasing. I mean, it was pretty in your face of all the the CM Punk teasing on uh, AEW Dynamite and right. Rampage episodes, and um, you know you you get all revved up you you know it's coming and it's still there and just the outburst is just oh it, it felt so good i i said i was actually shaking at the time um it was just one of i mean it wasn't like i was you know like my hands were like this it was just uh part of it was because i had a cold brew so that i could stay up and i'd have the energy to talk about it right now but um <laughs> i i was just so excited it's it's just i we, I, I feel like over the last couple of years, I've only been saying this about AEW, um, sometimes with NXT, but I keep having that reminder of like, this is what pro wrestling is supposed to feel like. We said that from the very first AEW pay-per-view. We've said it for most AEW pay-per-views. Even if the stories are clumsy going in, when you walk away from that, and a lot of it is crowd reaction, so... You know, we missed out on a lot of it last year, but, you know, I, I'd go back to like the roar wasn't the same, but it's like when Moxley and Kingston first came through on that Wild Thing song, uh, walking through, you know, the first live audience that they had. Yeah. And that was something where it was like, it's a completely different roar, but it was, it's, it's so much different. It's so real. It, it feels like you're more a part of it in AEW. And it just, there's a better relationship, I feel like, between, the show and the fans and it makes these pops, these moments. Um, we, we've been saying AEW needs special moments, but maybe they're special for a different reason. And that's why it's not to the level of like uh, John Cena coming back because they have, they have something that AEW is never going to be able to touch. But CM Punk is one of those things. And Oh my gosh. Um, they, they just nailed it. I, I don't know. It's um I know I'm all over the place, but ultimately it's just like uh, it's pure joy and excitement. And I th yeah, I, I hope think a lot of all, people I hope a lot of people cut, are we're sharing all CM Punk uh, promos tonight because we're all just kind of heart felt like I, I didn't think this moment would ever happen, and then there it was, and then uh, Creation Matrix dropped it. When I saw it on TV, I peed a little. <laughs> when I saw yeah, I saw that comment pop up. I was like, oh, that is it's gold. Yeah. Um, you know, I, know we, I think we all need uh, to invest in uh, Calco cut pants tonight. Um, <laughs> well, I was gonna say if uh, if it's it's a gold, you know, this, this comment here is gold, and ah, oh, fuck, you ruined it because you stepped on it. But I was gonna say if he's dehydrated, it's gold for two reasons. God damn it! All right, let's keep rolling. That was a fucking failure. All right, <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so Ben Davis, glad to uh, see Punk is back. Um, no, I mean, uh, you know, Creation Matrix. I'm glad you're here. I don't, I don't recognize the YouTube channel or your your YouTube handle here. So I'm glad you're here. Um, we are just as excited. Uh, this still doesn't feel real. Um, I totally agree with that sentiment. But Mike, I now I'm stepping on your toes. You started your thought twice. Uh, just wanted to get those comments in there. Uh oh, are you sneezing? Yeah, I had to sneeze for a second. Oh um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, what did you think of some of the, um, talking points in that off the cuff promo, um, you know, about, about finally feeling kind of, you know, in a good spot and feeling like he found a company where, you know, he left Ring of Honor, I think he said in was it August of 2005 and he, he left Ring of Honor wrestling and essentially saying, I haven't wrestled since, um, you know, it definitely if, quite a few uh, open digs at uh, his WWE experience. And I, I mean, well, I don't think that this program are necessarily going to dig it too much. I, if only because, you know, we're going to be there tomorrow to watch, uh, you know, a Peacemaker beat up Roman Reigns um, and listen to John count to three a whole bunch of times. Um, but definitely really uh, happy to hear Punk um, on his first night talking about how excited he is, um, that he's impassioned, that he's, um, he, he feels that that wrestling uh, love again because he's so excited to work with this young talent. And for night one, you know, for him to, you know, make this CM Punk night, but also 
make sure to include Darby Allen night um, in that same breath. And that crowd that was so hot for CM Punk, which obviously, of course, you know, this is a this is a momentous day, a momentous promo uh, for them still to throw Darby some love. Woo! That guy is uh, he's going to be a made man. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited for that that match in September. That's that's going to be big. But yeah, any of the talking yeah. points kind of jump out at you that you <laughs> wanted to touch on? How about uh, the only guy on planet Earth who can stop a CM Punk chant with a uh... hey guys, give me a sec. <laughs> <laughs> i absolutely love that like um the power that you have to be able to stop that chant no other person in pro wrestling has it like even paul Heyman needs to do some houdini magic uh to to get the fans to think one way and then he oh whoop, 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 oh i'm in this way and then they, they <laughs> hey have a little giggle at paul Heyman. but you got to put in effort you know, when you know those those CM Punk chants are coming, you got to put an effort. You got to be ready to go. Uh, you probably have to have notes on your hand to make sure you don't lose your place. Punk just rolls right through it, man. Um, yeah. But I, I love, too, that he he threw that out there. You know, the last seven years, I, I heard you guys. And uh, I kept coming back to all the moments that there were, like, not CM Punk chants, but, like, CM Punk riots, you know, like, at WWE live events. Like, there's no... Monday Night Raw tonight. Tonight is we're only chanting CM Punk. And you'd go to, you know, the what what was his old uh his old Twitter handles like player coach or whatever. Yeah. But it was still, you know, it's at CM Punk. And uh, you know, no mention of it. He he'd talk about, you know, the Chicago Blackhawks game. Uh he'd, he'd talk about something he was watching on TV, bring up Gordon Ramsay or something that he's watching. And not nothing like he wouldn't talk about it. But this was that moment for him to recognize uh, all of our love. I, I think it was great that he recognized like our, our disappointment in him because he doesn't have to do that. And we've talked out of both sides of our mouths, I think, during this time, the seven years that he's been gone, uh, that, you know, at, at some points we were asking fans to like, all right, chill. All right, let Nakamura finish his promo before you jump into your CM Punk chant. Uh, but then on the other side, you know, um, we did want Punk to come back, and we would jump into, like, the Royal Rumble rumors or something like that. Or initially, when AEW started and there were Punk rumors, we were excited about it. Um, but then, you know, we've we've also had our times, you know, we'll listen to, to uh, the... Um, the Colt Cabana podcast when uh, CM Punk initially came out and gave all of his, you know, his whole explanation. And you're just like, you listen to it and maybe a couple of weeks later, you're thinking back on some of the things he said. And you're just kind of like, gosh, I wish, I wish there's some way that this could work out, you know? And, and maybe that's not necessarily too much disappointment in him. Maybe it's just the seven years of, of trying not to acknowledge it, I think is where we were a little disappointed in punk and we wanted to yeah. get a little more, you know, Hey guys, sorry, I'll, I'll be back at some point instead of always just brushing it off until, you know, except for the last couple months. Um, but yeah, I, there, there are so many different feelings that we've had like throughout the, the hiatus here. And I, I would just say it was, it was pretty nice of somebody who, owes us nothing um he could have sailed off into the sunset as we always end our episodes with and he he didn't need to say yeah. sorry he didn't need to do any of that and he, he still took the time and um you know he's honest too there's there's so much honesty with he he wanted to come back for us but he was also coming back for himself um there's just there's something about missing a guy like CM Punk where we've been talking the last couple of weeks about missing a guy like John Cena. Um, you miss a guy like John Cena and I always go back to our, our casting table, right? We, we always, I always talk about, you got to have good casting. That's how you get a good pro wrestler. I don't care how good he can wrestle. If you want him to work in pro wrestling, he's got to be able to grab the mic. He's got to have the right voice. There's got to be the right cadence. Like that is, those are things that I think, are undervalued, but well, they speaking of casting work. is is it just me or is he starting to look like John Hamm? <laughs> well, I said Keanu Reeves was gonna play the uh was gonna be in the biopic, uh only because he could still deliver the line. Uh everybody keeps asking if I'm back. I'm <laughs> thinking I'm back. <laughs> um 
But yeah, no, that was a good interruption on your part because I was just going to keep going and going and yeah. going. I would say, um, you know, like the timing of his comeback too. He is such a good uh, businessman. Um, I mean, I'm sure he could have just went to any indie promotion and they would have picked him up. But I mean, to, to pick AEW, to pick something where he's going to have a podium, right? To kind of mm-hmm. get this CM Punk story out. But touching on the business part, I know that's kind of the, you know, not as fun portion of the, the smart business side of, um, you know, punk the man. How goddamn brilliant was it that somehow he didn't get stuck with being associated with a WWE produced song and that he has like, you know, the rights to that licensed living color cult of personality. Cause I saw some, I saw some tweets out there that, man, it'd be really cool if he came out to, uh, you know, like Alan Parsons, serious, you know, like, uh, like Michael Jordan, you know, coming back in Chicago, yeah. but that would have been cool. But I think that the moment was ah. just a plus perfect to hear cult of personality kick up and that crowd just, <laughs> man, it's, it's such a perfect, like identifying song with him. Those lyrics are just, they're just, they're just made for him. I know. I know that uh, um, uh, Living Color, uh, they probably wrote it for a slightly different reason, um, but it, it just works so perfectly with with what the punk character is all about. So, man, that 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 music touching, um, you know, all the all the nostalgia and just really, just really cementing that whole feeling was. Can fantastic. I? The the funny thing is, over the last week, we've heard. Um, the the Roman Reigns interview where he said, you know, CM Punk is is great, but he he never sold like The Rock and and John Cena uh, the way they sold. Um, and I I only bring that up because truly this moment was was absolute magic. And I act I I will say just to throw this in there, that is something that they built into that interview. And I feel really bad that I I actually think Roman was forced to say those things because I think he's a sweetheart. I don't think he holds any ill will towards CM Punk in any way. I, that was totally a WWE produced bullshit segment. So nobody get too mad at Roman. Just continue to be mad at the WWE. Uh, that being said, what's funny is the way they sold that moment. And this is why I think it's, it, I don't know if it's coincidental or maybe ironic, uh, but the way they produced that too was very WWE of welcome to the show announcers to say their piece, paying the crowd, cheering, waiting. You can just feel the, like the holding their breath and then boom music. I would challenge y'all to go watch the rock come back uh, when he was supposed to be like the host of WWE uh, of, of WrestleMania. Uh, when he came back, I think everybody kind of knew it was the rock. But they did that same thing where they just waited and waited and waited and waited and waited and just had the crowd like on. Oh, is it happening now? Is not anything happening? Is a match going to start? Oh, my God. What's going to happen? And then, yeah. you know, and then The Rock came out. And I, I that's why I think it's it's so funny to to bring up that Roman Reigns interview it was because they made it that big of a moment. And it is. It, tr- it totally is. It, it is. Gosh, I mean, for pro wrestling sake right now could be bigger um <laughs> i don't know if i have a problem saying that but yeah. um yeah it's it's just it 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 really is a great moment and and i just love right now that uh my brain is comparing it to a return one of the many of uh dwayne johnson to pro wrestling so yeah. put that in your pipe and smoke it wwe <laughs> Go yeah. fuck yourself. I, <laughs> I feel bad. Like uh, WWE's kind of left Roman out to dry twice now. Uh, once with this, you know, punk interview, and then the other time last week when John Cena got to cut that promo on him about, um, you know, uh, harming Seth Rollins' career and, you know, uh, uh, escorting Dean Ambrose out of town, and you get a big pop ski out of that, and they gave Roman nothing to work with. So it's just it's yeah. not fair. But uh, you know, head of the table, he's he's going to be fine. So let's do this. Let's focus this a little bit more. Um, so we know that Punk's first Ugh. match is going to be in September um, yeah. against Darby Allen. I got to say of like the big names, you know, if it was going to be, you know, between like a Darby, a Jungle Boy, um, you know, a Moxley or a Cody. I got to say of those four, I, I love going with Darby. 
Um, I think Mox, that is something that would be like a double or nothing, like title match that, you know, we can save that one. Um, Jungle Boy, I like it. It would be a, you know, a physical contest, but there's, there's just something about Darby, um, knowing that he's kind of a psycho, uh, willing to put his body on the line, you know, in every single match that he's in. Um, just as far as somebody who, you know, we, we, we talk about pressure, right, with AEW having to, you know, hit a home run with this debut for CM motherfucking Punk coming back. Like, Punk expectations are like, all right, now that you're back, uh, what do you got? You know, now he's got to have to actually rest. So, I mean, as far as a guy who's been out of the game for seven years, you know, a, a masked appearance or two, uh, notwithstanding on the indie scene, um, I think he's got to be out there to impress. And, you know, it's going to be a lot easier to impress if he's out there with a guy like Darby who could make you and I look like, um, you know, uh, uh, like ring generals. Um, so, Matt, do you, do you like that idea of Darby being the, the first dance, so to, so to speak, for CM? Yeah, I I think uh, a week ago when we talked about this, I, I wasn't as big a fan, but all I needed was CM Punk to respond to Darby. And I was like, no, I, I get it. Let's do it. Um, I mean, it's no surprise, right? I mean, Darby's been the one saying I'm challenging to become the best in the world. Um, I, I like the idea now, especially, you know, this is funny because uh, how many times have I said talking out of both sides of her mouth? uh since the show started and i didn't even like it last week and now this week mike i'm ready to say i actually think darby allen could win and one of the other rumors for tonight of course was brian danielson making his debut mike how about darby allen winning and he's still on his journey to become the best in the world and it's next guy up and dan <laughs> Brian Danielson makes his debut to challenge Darby Allen next. How how fucking nuts would that be? I know we want to focus impressive. on Punk. You think that's impressive until Darby pins Brian clean too, and then Brock Lesnar shows up. You know, and then <laughs> yeah, now we're just going bananas. No, this Matt, you're overthinking it. This is Chicago. This is CM Punk. We haven't seen this motherfucker in seven years. Um, the. The one thing going against Punk winning is his declaration that he wants to be there for the younger talent. And it's like, do you really? I mean, are you going to? I mean, that's, three, what's sold, three that's what sold it for me. I, I do like the idea that, um, like, now that I decided to book it instead of you telling me like you did last week. But I, I like the idea now. Like, what if, what if he goes down to the bottom and he makes it, like, like – it's a classic CM Punk like promos. He comes through like laughing, going, "Of course, I you know, I'm CM Punk. I've had to go through it all. So of course, I'm gonna have to start at the bottom and work my way up. I'm, I'm not handed anything. I've never been handed anything. I'm CM Punk. I need to work through this roster, bottom to top. And that could be the story. Uh, where last week I said, "Don't murder Hawk this shit. Put him in a main event title shot pronto." But then he'd have to win. And then he'd be holding that title and it'd be a huge mess and it'd get all mucky. And then we try to figure out, well, I guess Jericho can go and Kenny can go take a break because CM Punk is here and we don't really need anybody else around. So yeah, they're they're almost they're almost at that ideal spot already where they don't have to rely on the Jerichos and the Cody's, right? Where those guys right. could take a backseat and produce or be on commentary. It's Man, what a problem to have. So it feels so young in the AEW's existence um, that they're already fleshing out this massive roster, moving to two days. And God, just bless them for that 60 minute program. Oh, Rampage. Mwah. That's all I need. You know, I'm going to be up. I'm usually up late on a Friday night. 60 minutes. Uh, that was pretty good. Let me do my, uh, we got to do our uh, hot tag question here. Mike, do, do, do you think with the one hour, like they, they might already be rethink, rethinking this one hour show? Because having a massive promo like this, I would have to think after watching the matches that we got to watch, severely cut into their match time. <laughs> Am I wrong? Was I the only one who saw that, that it felt like everything ended quickly, 
rather abrupt, abruptly. I, I mean, tonight was about CM Punk, so it's not like they were going to get a five star match out of anybody. But I, I, I guess though that was my feeling at the end of the night is everything moved really quick. Um, after Punk, and I'm that Punk I could have watched all night. Yeah, I mean, he he probably could have stayed out there for forty five minutes if he wanted to. Um, yeah, I, it just it felt like the right mix. Um, you got some main event uh, promo work from Punk. Um, you got a cup of coffee from Jade Cargill. Um, you got to see Mox, who is still arguably without a title, the face of this company. Um, and Eddie Kingston, they got you know a young kid out there trying to prove himself. Um, and then uh, you got a, a match that had real, um, uh, you know, a, effects on the standings and what was going to happen in terms of that tag team, you know, tournament. See who's going to fight um, it all out. So it's they had real matches with stakes, and then you got a little cup of coffee from the rest of the division. It's 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 just it was just enough. It won entree, and then a couple little appetizers. It was it was fantastic, and Amy. Oh, God bless her. Here she is, another comment for us. Please, please, and we're on your side, Amy. Please keep giving us one-hour shows. It leaves us wanting more without boring us. Mwah. Yes, absolutely. Um, Couldn't yeah, have said so, it better myself. Yeah, I, I like the hot tag question, but yeah, this is exactly what it should be. I should feel like, oh, I wish we could have got a, you know, more of a match from Jade, and now you know this is something we can do at a pay-per-view. Or build it up to a you know a special event on a dynamite. We're going to see her in a 15, 20 minute match against you know the Statlanders, uh, the Brit Bakers, the Hikaru Shidas. You know it's it's going to feel like more of an event instead of you know well here we're seeing her again for the you know we saw her in hour one of Raw and now we're going to see her in hour two and three of Raw and you know it's it's this is this. You know, CM Punk talk about getting his passion for wrestling back. I think the brothers of discussion are getting their passion for wrestling back. And it's all thanks to AEW, man. Um, I did uh, I did see a funny thing uh, while, you know, the shows were going on. Um, I think we need to clarify for anybody that is upset that CM Punk's in AEW because that does exist out there. For uh, who? Why are the we notion... talking to those people? Gross. Yeah. The notion that, yeah, like wrestling is back um so you know the the little conversation i saw was uh aew fans saying wrestling is back i guess every aew show before this sucked huh <clears throat> look we all get worn out on any show anything gets like it it drags on you what we're saying is now like this excitement is back you always need the juice in pro wrestling anybody who I don't know if you if you can just accept the same roster night in and night out week after week without excitement or surprises like this, I and maybe the surprise happened a month ago no, and they announced listen, that Punk you know, was this signing. Is, this but, is uh, the New England Patriots already have won Super Bowls and then they go out and get Randy Moss. Like, damn! Like it was already the Patriots. Now they got Randy Moss. Like it's not that it was boring. They were still winning championships and my attention, but now they have both on the team. So yeah, we're going to crank it up a little bit and be excited for these guys. And how did he come back? Man, it, it felt like those moments at the airport with a loved one you haven't seen in seven years because they were gone and they came back and you got to hug them at the airport. And we just got to cherish this moment. Grown men were crying and we're really going to be poo pooing this moment. Oh, I got I've got another one, Mike. Another hot tag. Give me that. Give me that Good. Luchasaurus hot tag. I'm ready to. <laughs> I'm ready to well, tailor the case. No, no, no. Fools. We're going back to punk already. All right, could, cool. Could Jesus Christ Himself get a bigger pop than what CM Punk got tonight? Where would Jesus need to uh, debut, as it were, uh, for him to get as big a pop as CM Punk did tonight? At the United Center in Chicago. If Jesus came back and cut a pipe bomb promo on Richard Dawkins, you couldn't have got a bigger pop out of the city of Chicago. <laughs> All right, that was, that was pretty good. I hope everybody else got a little minor popsky there for Mike there. Um, Appreciate it. Yeah, uh, no, uh, 
what I wanted to bring up with uh, the Jungle Express is, um, and I, I don't want to get this wrong, so I am using Google. I'm cheating. Tarzan Boy. Um, that also song. Jungle Boy. Oh, okay. That was, song is it. It felt. It felt like we had three parties tonight. That when that song plays, I want to get up and dance. We had uh, in living color, and then we've got wild thing ending the show. Yeah. Um, pe more people need to be talking about how it is. You know what, uh, Jade? I don't know what her song is, but it is a rocking guitar solo, like Eddie Van Halen style, just yeah. from start to finish while she's walking to the ring. This whole the whole fucking night was yeah. a goddamn party for every entrance. And um I, yeah. we need to give more props to Tony for throwing out the kids. Taking in those pockets for the music. Yeah. yeah, but like real real fucking music playing. Jesus. How many times have we been talking uh ad nauseum about, you know, a another CFO dollar sign song? Which I, I God love them for trying. Everything pales in comparison to something like <laughs> anything really that came, that that AEW pushed out tonight. I just yeah, hats yeah, off. Rampage, I'm glad uh... you you pulled a me thinking I called Jungle Boy Tarzan. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you said you were Googling it, and I was like, oh, man, he's, he's part of Jurassic, Jurassic Express. I think you called it Jungle Express. So then you said uh, there was Tarzan Boy out there with oh. Dinosaurus. So, uh, you know why? why? I mean, here, I, I'm reading our notes. That's why. I, I wrote, I or did, one of us wrote Jungle Express. That's why. Um, <laughs> um, but Jungle yeah, Boy, I mean, this was, this Tarzan was Boy, the song. Um, we also had uh, talking about music. We had uh, the Jericho muted entrance with with no uh, Judas playing. And, Although uh, I do think you, <laughs> you no. what? Uh, I again, I, I've said this before. I've gotten in trouble. Um, I do think Judas sucks as a song. It's 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 not a good song. Man, Matt throwing shade. <laughs> Man, there's twenty thousand screaming AEW fans who could disagree yeah. with you. And, hey boy. Uh, I was one of them because I was singing along. I'm coming, I'm coming. That's all right, man. We'll sing the song. You can be the the wrestling Judas. <laughs> How about that? Um, one more thing musically, and I'm sorry I have to pivot away from AEW for a moment, but a momentous event happened on SmackDown today because Rick Boogs wrestled. Not only did Rick Boogs wrestle. My my young woman, my lady, she sat down because she knew that CM Punk was going to be on. And she made a mistake. She sat down a little early and didn't realize it was SmackDown. So they ate. <laughs> and I said, there's Rick Boogs. He's the guy who retweeted us like twice. So I'm very excited. This is his first match. Oh, but he's going up against Apollo Crews and his, his big goon. I'm pretty sure Boogs is out there to eat a pin. And Matt... I was wrong. Boogs has a crazy finisher where he stretches out Apollo Crews, plays air guitar on his ribs, and then does a pump handle slam for a clean John Cena one, two, three finish. Man, I popped so hard, I, you could have thought CM Punk returned. That's how big of a night this was. From Milwaukee, Wisconsin, weighing in at 200. All right, I couldn't help it. <laughs> I was so happy for Boogs. Um, I, I felt like Pat McAfee in my basement. It was fantastic. <laughs> I'm getting a tear in my eye right now. I'm just so happy for the Boogs crew. Uh, that, no, that was a great transition because, um, I mean, there isn't much else uh, uh, else to say about uh, Rampage uh, 2, I guess, well, as I put it I'm in the just... notes. Last for Punk, I'm so excited that they already announced he's going to be on Dynamite. That you know, yeah. good. it looks like it's going to be you know not a once in a while thing. We're going to get to hear the man speak, see him on our TVs. I can't wait for next Wednesday. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. Yeah, it's nice to know he did say uh, he he's you know what his calendar's open or how did he put it uh, in the promo? Like this this doesn't feel like a. A Brock Lesnar thing, um, but 
Mike, I, I did want to ask, uh, I guess now that we're, you know, like I said, we could wrap up the, the Rampage conversation. Um, I just uh, jokingly brought up Brock Lesnar. Uh, you texted me this comment, and I said, this is a fun question to ask on the podcast. Uh, so I want to get your thoughts. Mike, is your WWE divorce on the table? Man, I'm very excited to see John Cena tomorrow. I... And actually, I listened to some interviews, and you're going to fall out of your chair. I'm kind of excited to see uh, the anointing of Damian Priest with the championship. I honestly listen to that guy, and he sounds like a pretty charismatic fan of wrestling. And, you know, we haven't quite gotten to see that on television because of the way they write his character. But that is a whole other story. Um, I'm actually still excited for portions of WWE, but... When you ask if the divorce is on the table, it's not that I'm ever going to not be invested in some of the characters, but I definitely feel like AEW is going to be my priority. Um, and it's more than likely, Matt, going to be the priority of this show. Uh, especially because we, uh, we can talk about the NXT TakeOver 36 preview as well. We can run through that real quick. Um yeah. That really feels like the end of an era sort of takeover. Yeah, it's the I mean, Sunday show. That's a little unusual. Yeah, we're, we're wrapping up storylines that I thought we wouldn't get for quite a while. Uh, and they're wrapping up quick. So uh, it sounds like there there was a, a rumor that, uh, or maybe it was just a report, I don't know, that uh, they've even started filming, uh, pre-taping, NXT episodes. Uh, so they're not, they're not live anymore. Um, I can't confirm that that is true, but the point of me bringing that up is to kind of piggyback on your statement that AEW would become the priority of this program, uh, only because NXT was my priority. And now it seems like it's not a WWE priority. So the, um, I don't know. Once the care and attention starts to drop, uh, I'm sure the quality will too, and it, it probably is going to fall by the wayside as well. I mean, yeah, you know, I, I'm going to stand by my point. Oh I'm my god, gonna... Amy, <laughs> Amy with the I'm not divorcing WWE, but they're definitely my side piece. Um, that <laughs> Jesus, Amy, we need to get you on the podcast. That was way you more know. eloquent and beautiful than anything. That and I still. <laughs> We still got to go shopping and see if we can make that uh, Missouri show happen. Because now I really, now I, I really want to go and see CM Punk in person. So we'll get that figured out. Mike, we're ready to sail off. Um, yep. Happy this was a CM fun Punk episode, Day, everybody. Yeah, yeah everybody uh, that tuned in for their first time to watch uh, the Bros of Discussion, please subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel. Uh, we would greatly appreciate it. We are also covering uh, the Red Wings. We play some video games. Every now and then, you can find our Twitch channel also as the Brothers of Discussion. Uh, find us on Twitter at BOD Podcast and on Instagram, Brothers underscore of underscore discussion. And uh, I think that be it. Oh, right. And our shop page. Uh, just go to BODpodcast.com. Shop button is on the homepage. You just click on that sucker. You can support your two favorite Brothers of Discussion and uh, buy some fun t shirts. Uh, we've been doing hot tag segments all episode. We have our hot tag line running right now. Um, so, uh, so check those out. It's BODpodcast.com or brothersofdiscussion.com. All right, everybody, thank you so much and happy CM Punk Day. Happy CM Punk Day. Woo! Opa! They do that in Chicago sometimes. <laughs>